Greetings everyone, Archimedes here, and welcome back to another Brickfield Lego video. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at rack and pinion steering. So, let's get started, shall we? There are many ways to make a steering platform for a Lego or Technic car. However, rack and pinion steering, I think, has the most allure, because it's so close to our modern car design steering. So let's just take an overview of rack and pinion steering design. But before we get any further, let's talk terminology for a moment. As you might assume, rack stands for a rack gear. Now, rack gear in rack and pinion steering is moved back and forth by means of the pinion, which is a straight tooth or bevel gear. Attached to this rack gear, pulled back and forth by the pinions, is the kingpin, which is this little lever mechanism on the side. This is where the wheel is attached to. So thus, when you turn the pinions back and forth, it moves the rack side to side, moving the kingpin side to side, and thus turning the wheels. Honestly, that's rack and pinion steering. The only thing you need to know, if you want to step out and des start designing your model right away, is that the rack gear, as it moves back and forth on the kingpins, will decrease the space in between the rack gear and the body of the car. So you should make sure that there's at least a half beam's width of space in between the rack gear and the main body. Those are the general rules for rack and pinion steering. If you want to head out now and start building, be my guest. Otherwise, if you're still feeling like you need a little more inspiration, let's take a closer look at some several ways to design rack and pinion steering. If you have the right pieces, building rack and pinion steering is as easy as 3.14159 Two six five eight five three five, and so on and so forth. In other words, with the right pieces, rack and pinion steering is as easy as pie. It all revolves around this little cyclops eye member with little ears on the sides. You can see it's got the traditional little cross hole here, pin hole here, and two little bump outs on the sides. You see, these two little strange nubs fit very nicely into this thing. Don't know what to call it, but it does its job very nicely. If you simply clip the nubs, or the ears, into the holes in this assembly, put a crossover pin in the cross hole, and attach this to your vehicle, finally dropping a rack gear on top of the crossover pin, you have a rack and pinion steering system. Only other thing you have to do is clip a wheel into the handily p p positioned hole right across from this weird member. If you simply drop a little pinion gear assembly over top of it, you're ready to steer. Since the kingpin pieces were designed for this, the whole assembly is very small and works very smoothly. But what if you don't have these fancy little kingpin assemblies or one of these rack gears? that clip nicely. That's where things get a little more fun. If you don't have this fancy kingpin assembly, then the first piece I always look to is this Cyclops eye member with two cross holes on each side and one pin. All you have to do is attach the Cyclops eye member to the solid body of your car on both sides, then drop your rack gear over top and voila. In this design, I use binocular members to attach the Cyclops member to the main body of the car. While in this design, I just simply attached the Cyclops eye members to a beam along the bottom, and then attached the worm gear and the wheels from there. There are many ways to create rack and pinion steering without the traditional Lego designed kingpin. It's just up to you to figure out which way works best for you. 
But what if you don't have one of these fancy rack gears with the nice holes on the sides to clip it into the kingpins? Then you have to be a little more inventive. The first method is pretty obvious. All you need is one of these rack gears that can be clipped onto a brick, two of the crossover beam to stud pegs, and a beam. All you need to do, clip the stud pegs to the beam, put the gear on top, and voila, you have a rack gear. This design is fine at all if you have one of these rack gears. But what if you don't have any rack gears whatsoever in your collection? Well, as I was playing around with my LEGO collection yesterday, I came up with a new idea to make a rack gear. This design revolves around these worm gears. To design it, you'll need two zero degree angle axle connectors, a six length axle, and two worm gears. You can also make a bigger or smaller version, but this is a nice size for me. All you have to do is take the two worm gears, thread them onto the axle, and put the axle connectors on the ends like this. If you take a look, this is the exact same length as our original Lego designed rack gear. And it works exactly the same. Here is our original car on which I just swapped out the original Lego rack gear for our new worm rack gear design, as you can see here. All we have to do is pop a simple pinion subassembly chassis over the top here, and we have a simple rack and pinion gear design. But this worm gear rack has a trick up its sleeve. As you know, a worm gear has its teeth on all 360 degrees of it on each side. What this means is you can place the pinions anywhere you want on the worm rack. For example, here I have them placed underneath to save space. As you can see, it still works just as well. You can even place the pinions at a strange angle to the worm rack since the teeth are 360 degrees around. In a small go-kart design, like the one you see here, when you want to have the steering wheel at an angle, but don't want to take up a ton of space in the hood trying to figure out a way to angle the steering wheel, this works very nicely. Using the worm rack also means that you can have multiple pinions attached to the same rack gear. So thus, in this design here, you could have a little steering wheel down here for like a minifigure to drive, but you could also have one on top of the model so that you can so that an actual human can have control of it, but it also looks like the minifigure is steering as well. For today, we talked about rack and pinion steering. We took a look at the basic rules for rack and pinion steering, then looked at various ways to design it. We took a look at the method using the basic Lego pieces that helped us to create a much smoother design, but also found some alternative ways to create the kingpin and also to make the rack, especially the worm rack. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you liked this video. I hope that it was interesting or informative, or at least that it entertained you for a little while. If you did in fact like this video, please comment, rate, or subscribe. If you didn't like this video, still, please comment and rate. If you really want, still, please subscribe too. The point is, I want to hear what you have to say that would make this channel different or better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you all farewell. My name is Archimedes36, and I'll see you next Sunday.